If you listen to music from around 2011 to 2014, then you probably heard a song from Ollie Murs. But after that, he might as well have disappeared. So what happened? Before we talk about what happened, let's go back to the beginning. And Oliver Stanley Murs was born on May 14th, 1984 in Essex, England. And honestly, I doubt many people could even guess. But Ollie had a twin brother and a sister named Faye. Interestingly enough, Ollie was a great footballer and played striker for his school's football team before playing semi-professionally for Isthmian Division 1 Northside Witham Town. I probably butchered that. But Sally was forced to give up his football career after getting injured. Following the injury, Ollie worked as a telemarketer and then as a recruitment consultant, all the while performing as a part of a cover band called the Small Town Beggars with his good friend John Goody. Funny enough, he also appeared on Deal or No Deal around this time, although he only won 10 pounds. Which by the way is money, not weight to all my non-British people. Anyways, in 2008, when Ollie was 24, he decided to backpack across Australia for a few months. And when he returned back to England, re-auditioned for The X Factor after two unsuccessful tries in years before. <laughs> This time around, Ollie auditioned with Stevie Wonder Superstition, and as Simon Cowell would say, it was his easiest yes ever. As you could probably guess, Ollie cruised through the boot camp, and at the live shows was more the same, as after he performed A Fool in Love, the judges described him as being in a different league. Throughout the competition, it seemed like Ollie was finding his own, and his little dance moves called the Ollie Wiggle set him apart from the crowd. Fast forward some time, and Ollie advanced all the way to the finals, where he sang Superstition once again, and after qualifying for the final two, impressed the judges enough for Lewis Walsh to say that he was born a showman, and no matter what happens next, he'll have a great career in music. Which helped soften the blow after he ended up losing to this fellow Joe McElderly. But even though he lost, Ollie had done enough to sign a record deal with Epic Records and Cisco Music soon after. <laughs> Ollie released his first single from his debut title Please Don't Let Go, and although it dropped the same day as Teenage Dream by Katy Perry, the song still ended up number one on the UK charts. <laughs> Only a few months after the lead single, Ollie dropped the self-titled album, which entered the UK charts at number two, with the biggest week one album sales from a debut as it sold over 108,000 units. <laughs> Following the early success, by June of the following year, Ollie had already started working on a second album, and then in that July released a single Heart Skips a Beat, which became his second number one, and this time charted all across Europe. <laughs> following the success of the song, that September, Murs announced a second album, which later became In Case You Didn't Know, and then the following month dropped another single titled Dance With Me Tonight. Just like Heart Skips a Beat, the song was yet another number one and helped Ollie build momentum for his album that dropped the following week, which once again peaked at number one on the UK album chart. <laughs> Usually it takes some time for even the best X Factor contestants to find a lane for themselves, unless they're these guys. But Ollie was doing it without even trying, and it seemed like the beginning of something beautiful. <laughs> In April 2012, Murs announced that he was working on his third album and dropped the first single in September called Troublemaker with good old Florida. <laughs> considering the collaboration, it seemed like an attempt to build an audience across the Atlantic, which would make sense considering that it was only his second US single, and I guess it worked as it reached number 25 on the US Billboard Hot 100, along with As Usual, debuting at number 1 on the UK charts. <laughs> The eventual album, Right Place Right Time, released that November and was number one as you could probably guess, but even more impressive is that it peaked in the top 20 in the US. As you could tell, things were going well for Ollie, and around the same time he opened for One Direction on the North American leg of their Up All Night tour, so I'd say he was hitting a bit of a stride. And so it wasn't a surprise that if you fast forward a bit, in July of the following year, Merz revealed that he had been working on his fourth album, and then in November of 2014, a week before releasing the album, he dropped the single Wrapped Up, which debuted at number 3 on the UK singles charts, while the second single titled Up reached number 4, seemingly <laughs> indicating that the songs were no longer automatic number 1s, although still gaining good traction. But nonetheless, that November, Ollie dropped his fourth album titled Never Been Better, which peaked at number one in the UK charts and 42 on the US Billboard 200. <laughs> In early 2016, Murs began working on his fifth studio album, which turned out to be 24 Hours, with the first single titled You Don't Know Love releasing that July and peaking at 15 on the UK charts. <laughs> Although his success with singles wasn't quite the same, the album still reached number one once again, which was crazy enough his fourth time doing it. Anyways, fast forward a bit, and after going on tour in January of 2018, Murs revealed that he was working on his sixth album and dropped the debut single Moves with Snoop Dogg, which peaked at 46 on the UK singles chart. 
Interestingly enough, the album, which eventually became You Know I Know, featured both new and old songs compiled together, and this time peaked at number 2 on the UK albums chart, being his first non-number 1 to date. Although it didn't hit number one, the album still went platinum like the rest, but it was a bit of a sign of the times for Ollie. And around that same time, Ollie became a judge on The Voice UK and did some vocal work for this 101 Dalmatian series and the forgotten animated movie Spies in Disguise. Unlike what he had done for the past eight years before, Ollie took a bit of a break from the music making process to focus more on his personal life, and during that time found love, which likely was aided by the lockdown. And so, in June of 2022, Ollie announced that he was engaged to his girlfriend, Amelia Tank, who he had been dating since 2019. While back on the music side of things, in February of that year, Ollie split with the label RCA Records. Fast forward a bit, and that October, Ollie released her first single, Die of a Broken Heart, which peaked at 19 on the UK charts, and then his second single, I Hate You When You Were Drunk, for the album Marry Me, that dropped that December, and Dope Enough charted at number one. Here we are in the present, and it seems like Ollie Murs hasn't as much disappeared as he has disappeared from the US mainstream, although he's still somewhat successful across the pond. I had nothing else to do, so that makes me uncomfortable that you were sitting watching this woman like that. <laughs> he's no One Direction and never truly caught on with the American audience, but had a good run with songs like Heart Skips a Beat, Dance With Me Tonight, Troublemaker, Wrapped Up and Up. But it seems like in order to stick out from the rest of the UK fellows and fellas, as a solo artist, you simply have to be an anomaly like Adele, Ed Sheeran, or Capaldi, or you'll likely just have limited success because of how competitive the US music scene is. It seems like this was the tale of Ollie. He was and is very talented, but he was literally built for the time that he was successful in. His style of pop disco dance music was really popular in that 2011 to 2014 window, but after that taste changed and so now it's a lot more difficult for him to gain traction, even in the good old UK. Hey, bruv. Based that on our bad health care in school shootings like you stupid Americans. To be honest about all this though, I doubt he cares all that much because he recently got married. Woo! Congrats! I will all of you! Daddy, chill. And I'm sure he'll be a lot more focused on his family life, which could get bigger soon because of baby news, and his judging on The Voice, although I'm sure he still has some tunes in him. Yeah, no, just seeing friends and family really and, and, and getting back into work a bit. But I mean, you gotta keep in mind that he's 39 years old, so he's not the young buck that he used to be, which honestly is a good thing, because I'm sure he's happier than ever. And what's better than that? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video about good old Ollie Murs. Hope you enjoyed. And if you did, smash the subscribe and like buttons. And have a great rest of your day. Peace out. I think but I'm sure we're on the X Factor. When we that? When we did, I'm sure. Don't you... tell him, Ollie. Don't tell him. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>